you or someone you love needs help for an addiction, where do you turn? Foundations Recovery Network offers individualized treatment for the whole person. Our goal goes beyond short-term sobriety. We address substance abuse and co-occurring mental health issues together, providing a firm foundation for long-term recovery. The first step is often the hardest, but we're here with a free assessment, insurance information, and treatment options. Our confidential helpline is available 24-7, so call 877-714-1318 and discover the Foundation's Recovery Network difference today. This is Rich Roll, and you're listening to Silver Guy Radio. Yo, what's up? Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks to Humans for bringing us in. Thanks to you for supporting the show. Pumped to be on the microphone today in Northern California. Very excited. I hope you can hear that in my voice. I'm hella excited as we say up here in North Carolina. If you're cool and you're still trying to be hip. I don't know, do the youngsters say hella anymore? I know us uh, OGs say hella. Bring that back to the 90s, probably to the 80s even. I think that's uh, around the time when, when I first heard somebody say that's hella cool. I think South Park picked it up at one point and made fun of it a little bit. You got to. It's kind of odd, right? But it's definitely a NorCal branded thing. So I'm feeling hella motherfucking good today. How you feeling? Good, good, good. I wish I could hear you, but I can't. But I'm sure you're doing great. And if you're not, we got some good content for you today. That's hopefully, hopefully going to make you think a little bit. And uh, I have a couple of questions to ask to start the show. What are you holding on to on the inside? What tools do you need to dig it out and get rid of it? And what's it going to take to motivate your ass to take action? Those are the cu- a couple of the questions we're going to talk about today. And then um, I'm going to help you think more about them and then how they might apply to something in your own life. And then I'm going to share a quick story with you. But before we do that, be sure to check us out at www.thatsoberguy. Why the fuck am I talking like that? I don't know. See, I'm so excited. I had a little bit of coffee today, ready to go. Let me let me backtrack. Let me back up real quick. Let me stop there. Let me take a breath. <sighs> breathe, Raymer. You got to breathe. See, back to meditation right there. I'm going to calm it down, calm the nerves down. It's all part of this. But it is very nice to be excited about your job. I'll tell you that much. Let me try this again. Be sure to check us out at thatsoberguy.com for past episodes, resources. You can contact us there. You can help support the show by donating or leaving us a motherfucking review on iTunes. Woo! Who's pumped? Who's pumped? Fuck all that. I can't I can't just lay down like that anymore. That's, you know, it's part of the energy, right? Yes, part of the energy. So leave us a review. Give us some love. Contact us there. Anything you want, check out. You got past episodes, all kinds of cool stuff there. Please help support us and all of you that already do help support us with feedback and uh, leaving us a review on iTunes, donations sometimes we even get and we just really appreciate those. It does help support the platform, so thank you. Now, if you have questions about whether you or a loved one may need some help, you can contact Foundations Recovery Network at 877-714-1318. Foundations has nationwide residential and outpatient facilities. And they can provide a confidential assessment and review the best treatment options for you or your loved one's current situation. So give them a call. We've been working with them for years now. Foundations is some great folks. They really care about their people and about helping others out there who are struggling right now. So one more time, that's 877-714-1318. All right, let's get back to these questions here. I got a great story. Well, I don't know if it's great. I think it's great. You might not think it's great. I enjoy it. It's a personal experience I want to share today. And, uh... Um, I had some questions kind of based around that that I wanted to ask you first that I, I just said, and let me say them again. What are you holding on to on the inside? What tools do you need to dig out and get rid of it? And then what's it going to take to motivate your ass to take action? Motivation, man, that's a tough one. And, you know, sometimes we can put things off. I know I can put things off a lot. And part of it is because, man, let's face it, we all have busy lives. A lot of us have kids. We have families. We have jobs. We have um, extracurricular things like sports for our kids and uh, all kinds. We've got groups and, you know, we want to do things in life. We want to live life to the fullest. And so there's all these different components. And a lot of the time, some of the things 
uh, get put off a little bit. Some of the, you know, even, even some like, let's say household stuff. And that's kind of, because that's kind of what we're talking about today um, is, is something I was putting off for a while and how and why I finally got it done. So we bought a house in last October and I don't know who it was. Somebody left a review and said a great episode, but you talked too much about buying a house. So number one, we didn't buy a house. We just rent that shit from the bank because regardless if I ever even pay this house off, I still have to pay taxes on it every month. So regardless, I'll never technically own this house. And I'm sure someone will find out their way to argue with me about that. Someone could. Okay. But let's just face it. That's the way it is. And I rent it from the bank. So I always like to say that, but there's some nice tax benefits, all that good stuff, right? Enough about buying the house. And thank you to the person who left that iTunes review. I won't talk about it too much today. Okay. We're going to jump right into this, man. How many times am I going to say that? I almost hit stop right there. Do you see how that happens? I hit stop because I want it to be perfect. Fuck it. Let's go. So I'm pretty handy depending on what the project is. Okay. And at the same time, I've done a lot of different construction work over the years. I'm a drywall finisher by trade. So I can definitely do some drywall and, um, and, and finish work at the same time. I've done tile, some carpentry stuff, um, all kinds of different stuff. Little, not really much plumbing, a little bit, not actually not really much electrical either, because I don't want to kill myself. I almost blew myself up one time trying to fix a dryer. I don't know exactly how I survived, but somehow my hand was on something um, that didn't allow the or the uh, the um, electricity to use me as the conductor. Thank God. Uh, so I try to stick with my family. Matthew's electric over there. They can handle all the uh, all the electrical stuff. Okay, but I've done a lot of different things. We put the flooring in our house. A lot of a lot of good little projects, right? At the same time, I've also been known to be called Clark Griswold because of my tendency to do it wrong probably five, six, seven times before I actually get it right. And I'm going to fuck some things up along the way. It's just part of it. I'm probably going to go in the wrong direction when I'm driving too, nine times out of 10, even with the GPS on. Don't ask me why. All part of the experience, Russ. So there was this stump in the middle, in the middle of the backyard, right? Where, I mean, literally right in the middle. So you got this huge stump coming up you know, and when we moved in, we had this checklist. We're going to do X, you know, this, that, this, that, this, that. And the stump was on the list. Like I said before, life gets crazy. We've done a lot of different projects. We're trying to live life. The stump was still sitting there into May. Okay. So, you know, what's that? October, May, I don't know, seven or seven or eight months, right? Is that seven or eight months? May, something like that. And it hadn't been touched. It was still there. It needed to come out right in the middle of the lawn, having to walk around it. It's annoying. It's an eyesore. It's ugly. I got to look out the window at this dumbass stump every time I walk out there or look outside. And um, every time my wife saw the stump, she made sure to remind my ass, hey, when is that stump going to come out? You're going to get that stump out sometime? Oh, man, we got to get that stump out. She kind of said in passing, oh man, God, that stump is so ugly. I wish we could get it out of there. So, okay, I get the hint, right? I need to get the damn stump out. So one day I'm getting ready for my daughter's eighth birthday party. Okay, we're all having family. We're having friends over. I want the house to look nice. I want it to just, you know, I'm having my people over. I want to have a nice place for them to, uh, to hang out and enjoy themselves and um, be comfortable. And I'm doing all, I, I did the front yard. I trimmed this damn tree. I mean, I literally bonsai this shit like Miyagi style, the tree out front, you know, and I, I filled the green garbage can up. I filled the, uh, the regular garbage can up. I mean, I got down on the front yard. Now it's time to go to the back, right? So I get back there. I'm raking. We got a, a big ass tree out there. I'm raking up all kinds of leaves and, you know, getting the dirt ready. They're going to do this egg race and, you know, I'm mowing the lawn and, and, and sweeping and pulling we all the normal stuff that you're going to do in a backyard to get it ready for some family to come over. Right. And there's the stump still sitting there, still marinating, just hanging out. I'm like, oh man, you stupid stump. I hate you. 
So I'm walking past it, walking past it, back and forth, getting different things done. You know, and I'm, 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 um, I walked past it. Like, I don't even know how many times that day and, and made so many excuses about why I couldn't pull it out too. you know, like, Oh, I don't have the right tools, man. I'm not going to have enough time. Oh, it's too hot today. Uh, maybe one of my homeboys said, burn it out. Maybe, you know, maybe I'll burn it out. And the answer always seemed to be next weekend. Uh, maybe I'll burn it out. Uh, yeah, next weekend. I just, you know, plain and simple flat out. I just didn't want to put the work in to take out the damn stump. Didn't want to do it. So I'm almost getting finished with the backyard. I'm ready for Lucy's party. Everything's looking great. You know, I'm starting to clean up. I'm tired. I'm hot. I'm ready to go inside, drink some cold water, get my nasty ass cleaned up. And as I'm walking by, I decide I, I'm a hammer, my framing hammer in my hand. Right. And I'm like, yeah, you fucking stump. I decide to give it a, a, a big ass crack. I'm just going to smack it because I'm mad at it. Right. And I'm, I'm too much of a, of a little bitch to take it out right now. So I'm just going to hit it like a little baby. Right. <laughs> kind of funny. So I'm walking by. And I, I give it this hateful blast, right? And I was shocked. A huge chunk of it just breaks off. Huge chunk of it. Boom. Smack it. Man, oh, and I, I'm, man I'm like, wow. I think it's kind of dead. So now I start thinking. You know, I still got, still got, you know, a little bit of time left. I can, maybe I can chip away at this thing. I mean, and then, you know, so then I start kind of pumping myself up. I'm like, man, I, I think I might be able to do this. I could... I could take this stump out right here, right now. Getting all excited. The Rocky theme song starts playing in my head. <laughs> dent, 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 dent. I'm like a real badass now, right? Hell yeah, I'm about to get this stump, son. Start getting all my tools, getting my gloves, putting them on. You can picture it, right? The music's playing in the background. I'm putting my gloves on, I'm thinking I'm all cool. Man, I might even take my shirt off and shit today. You know, I'm about to get this. <sighs> then I realize it's really all I have is a pair of gloves and a hammer. <laughs> and this stump is obviously going to take more than a hammer and a pair of gloves to get it out. It's huge. It's buried. The dirt is hard. And I said, you know what? I don't fucking care. I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of looking at it. It's going to really make my wife happy. It'll be great for the party. So I start getting some motivation behind it. I start supporting why would I want to get this stump out and what is it going to, what is it going to accomplish? How am I going to feel afterwards? How is it going to make my, my, my family feel my, my wife in particular? How's it going to make her feel? She's going to be happy. Get this stupid thing out of here. So I put on some of my best Merle Haggard and some Hank Williams jams. And I get to work, get out there on my hands and knees. I'm chipping away at this stump one piece at a time. I'm just smacking it, smacking it. I'm trading off left hand, right hand. I'm getting some good chunks off of it too because a, a, a decent little portion of it was already dead. It was super dry. And, um, you know, so as I'm hitting it, it's like flying off. You know, I'm getting some small chunks, some big chunks. I'm digging, I'm chipping, I'm digging, I'm chicken. I got a nice uh, chicken, I'm chipping. Get a nice chunk. I got a small chunk, some more digging, some more chipping. I literally have a redneck, not just because I'm listening to Hank Williams and Merle Haggard, but because the sun is just blasting down on the back of my neck, right? I'm sweating like a pig. It's hot that day. And I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to give up though. I'm not going to be defeated. I've, I've decided in my mind. See, that's a big thing. No matter one, you know, one of the biggest things I've learned about any, anything, whether it's recovery or life in general, taking out a dumbass stump. When I make a decision about something, I'm fucking all in. I'm going for it. I've decided on it and I'm not going to stop until I accomplish that goal that I have in mind. And, and it's almost a blessing and a curse sometimes because I can be absolutely obsessive about it. And rightfully so. I was obsessive about alcohol and drugs. Okay, so I've been able to kick that, thank God, you know, up until this day today. But that that mindset is still there. And so I can I can get really obsessive when I get in and it, it, it can be a great thing sometimes because I apply that energy. I always say that, man, people who are in recovery or who have struggled with addiction or substance use and, you know, have never um, have never or they feel that passion, but they never have been able to to use it in a positive manner, 
There's so many talented people out there. You're probably one of them listening to this right now. There's so many of you out there that have this beautiful, amazing talent inside, but you don't know how to access it. And part of it starts, I don't have all the answers. I don't know. For me, much of it started by making that decision and being true to it and saying, damn it, I'm not going to waver from this. I've decided on this and I'm fucking going for it. And understanding that there's going to be obstacles and challenges along the way, but it's up to me to overcome those and figure out ways to do that. Okay. And so back to the stump, because it's really relevant to this, to this situation. So I got the hammer, I got the gloves, I'm chipping away, I'm digging, I'm chipping, I'm digging, I'm chipping. And I finally realized, you know what? I have a sawzall in there. Maybe I can start cutting some chunks out. I don't have a chainsaw. If I had a chainsaw, it probably would have been a piece of cake. I guess I could have went and and rented one, but I wasn't even in that mindset. I didn't even think about that at the time. I had that one track focus. Like, I'm going to get this motherfucker out of there and I don't care how I do it. I'm going to do it. So I get the sawzall, right? And I'm like, man, yeah, I can start cutting. So I, I kind of, I keep digging down a little bit, boom. And I cut, I cut one of the, uh, one of the roots off. Damn. All right, man. I cut it in half, cut a little chunk out of it. Oh, sweet. I'm making a little progress here. Right? So I dive back into it some more. I think I grabbed a, a, a drink of water, turned the music up and I dive back in. I'm sawing, I'm hammering, I'm digging, I'm cursing. Definitely cursing going on. You got to talk to your your target there. You got to let them know that you're coming after them. You motherfucking stump, I'm going to get you, right? I'm sweating, I'm digging, I'm hammering, I'm sawing, I'm cursing, I'm going, getting after it. And and back to that, you know it doesn't work unless you give it a name too, right? And since I've already referred to it a couple times, I, even in the day, I kept calling it, you motherfucker, the stump came to be known as motherfucker. That was his name. And I was letting him know he was about to get it, right? So after... It had to be at least three hours. I finally decided, like, I mean, I, w- I was pretty exhausted at this point. I'm dirty. I'm sweaty. I'm nasty. I got to get ready to go. I, you know, I get everything together. I had other things I had to do in the evening time. I think I had to pick the kids up even. And, um, you know, I get to that point where I want to quit and I want to give up. And I, and, and what did I say? I said, oh, you know, I'll finish it next weekend. Right. The classic next weekend. I'll finish it next weekend. I was beat. And as motherfucker was kicking my ass, I had an old boss for a day. I did a laboring job <laughs> and this is, it was, uh, I don't remember his name. Was it Marvin? I don't know. We'll just call him Marvin. Big, tall, skinny, black dude, man. Fucking hilarious, man. And, and me and this other dude, we were working together as laborers and I walked onto this job site. I said, Hey, I need a job. I was like 19 at the time, I think. And he goes, all right. You can start tomorrow. So I showed up the next day and this dude called everybody motherfucker. That's all he did. So me and this other dude are working and he would, he would stop in periodically throughout the morning and he would check on us and go, motherfucker, what the fuck you doing? I ain't paying y'all for fuck off time. Motherfucker. I'm like, dude, this dude, man, are you kidding me right now? So I I finished out the day. I mean, that happened all day long. Motherfucker. What the fuck you? And we weren't even doing anything. We were working. We're trying to sweep and get our job done. And this dude, man, so I I can't work for people like that. I can't be micromanaged and, 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 and bitched at and stuff. So it's kind of funny. I got to the end of the day. I finished the day out. I walked off the job. I never even went back. I didn't even go back to get paid. That's how my, I just didn't give a shit. Whatever. I don't even care. I'm done. I quit. Whole different story. Let me get back on track here. So I think to myself, you're just going to give up. You're just going to quit, right? It even goes back to that mentality of walking off the job and just quitting. Now, fuck it. I don't care. That was that old mentality that I had. I didn't. It was like a fuck the world. Like, I don't even care. I'm just whatever. Whatever happens, happens, right? And so that applied in this. I was going to give up and quit on the stump, you know? And then I started thinking, you know, like, man, you're so close. Like, you can, you know, you can do this. Like, you got this shit. And then something went in my mind, in, in, into my mind. I used to have up in the old, in the old studio, the garage studio, whatever you want to call it. I kind of converted it at our old place, and I think it came from my sponsor. In in a conversation we had, it said, "Put in work, hella big, hella big. Put in work. 
man, that was all I needed, man. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put the work in. I, I decided I was going to do this. I decided I was going to dig this motherfucker out and I'm going to do it. So I got back on it and I dug out just enough, you know, after I, I chipped away some more, there was some really, really hard parts on it, but I dug out just enough way down underneath so I could get down to a different part of the root. And it looked to me, I couldn't tell a hundred percent, but it looked like it was the main root. The only thing that was left keeping this, this dumbass stump in there. I was able to kind of angle the sawzall down in there and get like this, get like this angled cut in there that was able to get all the way through it. Right. So I'm, I'm just, I mean, getting after it and I know I'm getting close. I'm starting to get excited. I start, you know, kind of cursing and, and I'm yelling at it and, Boom. There it is. It broke free. I could feel it. As soon as I hit it, I could feel the tension release on it. It kind of sprung up a little bit. I just burped. Sorry about that. <laughs> but it sprung up a little bit. See, man, you got to love my honesty, right? Got to love that shit. This ain't, you know, anyways, it, it springs up and I'm just like, I, for a minute, I couldn't believe it. Right. I couldn't believe that I just got this thing out. I was pretty excited and then I yanked up on what was left of that motherfucking stump right out of the ground. And I think I yelled like, hell yeah, motherfucker. Fuck you, bitch ass stump. Ain't got shit on me, son. I'm a boss. <laughs> I don't know if it went like that, but in my own mind, it was something along those lines, right? I was excited. I was, you know, that feeling of pride and accomplishment. And it might sound goofy. I know it's a stump, right? But that feeling of pride and accomplishment, it really made me feel high, but it was great. It was a sober, genuine feeling of excitement. And I had won a small fight that day. I had won a small fight that day. Okay. So I, I you know, I threw it all in the garbage and you know, I got all the stuff out of there. I kind of cleaned it up. I filled in the hole with whatever dirt and leaves and shit that I had left over uh, from the other side of the yard. We got some work to do in the backyard. That's for sure. But, you know, I filled it all in there. And uh, I cleaned up, cleaned all my tools up and stuff. And I think I sent a picture to one of my homies who I had talked to earlier. He had called and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting this damn stump out. And I was bitching about it a little bit. Sent one to him, sent one to my lady. And I was happy. And I couldn't believe I got that stump out with a pair of gloves, a hammer, and a sawzall. And a shitload of, of determination and, and work. You know, it, it took me a minute to get that thing out. But I didn't give up. I didn't give up. I kept going and I eventually, even though when I, I didn't think that I could do it, I got, I got the dumb stump out. Okay. So what are some takeaways here? What's your stump? What's your stump that's been sitting around for months and you walk by it, you know, or you think about it, you know, it's in the back of your mind, that thing that when you lay down at night, you try to go to sleep, but all of a sudden it pops in your, in your brain. And then you can't sleep maybe because of it. Or that thing when you're sleeping, you think about it. Or that thing first thing in the morning, you wake up feeling good. And then all of a sudden you remember, oh, that, that fucking stump. What's your stump? What have you been putting off? What have you been putting off? What have you been saying, I'll do it next weekend? Man, I'll do it tomorrow. And I don't know, it'll get done someday. You know, we all do it. So I'm not, I'm not claiming to be, you know, saying or, or saying that it's going to be perfect. It's not, I'm, I have things I put off still. I have things that are still my stumps that I'm working on. Right. But I'm just proposing the question to you. Think about it a little bit. What's your stump? What you've been putting off? How are you going to get motivated to start that shit? How are you going to get motivated to start it? You know, maybe there's no right answer to that. You know, maybe it's just a matter of doing it now, making that decision, make that decision and get after it. Is it something that needs to bring you to community out in the open to a, an open meeting? Is it going and finding a sponsor? Is it calling your sponsor? Is it stepping out a little bit and trying something new, you know, you're, maybe you're already sober, but you're not feeling motivated. You're not feeling passionate about something. And maybe there's a stump standing in your way from that, that you, you kind of know what it is, 
you know what you're passionate about. You feel like you have this purpose, but you're scared to step out. You know, well, how, how are you ever going to know if you don't try, if you don't get motivated to start, if you continue to put it off? You know, and then the last thing here I wanted to mention is, you know, we don't always have the right tools to deal with shit. Okay, there's plenty of tools out there, but sometimes it's hard for us to access them or find them or find the courage to get out and, and, and dive into them. So sometimes you, you have to find a way to use the tools that you have in that moment, at that time. Doesn't mean you can't go buy new tools or find new tools or practice new tools, but in that moment, instead of waiting for the perfect moment before you have all the tools that you're going to need to accomplish what you need to get accomplished, that day might not come. And you're never going to get there unless you get started right in that moment. All right. And last, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep trying. Don't put that shit off. Once you get started, dive in and go for it. Be patient though. You know, this stump analogy was a day thing. You know, your situation might be a long-term thing and that's okay, but you got to chip away at it. Just like I was chipping away with the hammer, little chunks at a time, digging, you know, digging, 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 little, little chunks. Then all of a sudden I find, oh, you know what? I can do it like this. Maybe I can try this. You know, the, 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 um, you know, the excitement the, the fun, the challenges, everything, it's not in the, the destination. It's in the journey there, right? That's a classic, almost feel a little cliche saying it, but it's so true. You know, that battle with the stump taught me way more than getting the stump out. The stump out, getting it out of there was, was great. But the battle in doing it, man, that's what taught me something that day. It really did. Okay, so there's never a right time to do anything. You just have to do it. And remember this, next weekend, next weekend may never come. Okay, we don't know. We got to be happy about today. We got to live in the moment. We got to decide now. There's never any better time than right now. I didn't plan on taking the motherfucking stump out that day. I just did it. I just got after it and did it. So I hope something today speaks to you. Feel free to give us any feedback. Check us out at thatsoberguy.com for past episodes, resources. Uh, you can contact us there. And uh, you can also help support the show by donating or leave us, leaving us a review on iTunes. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for listening to the show and uh, supporting this platform. And uh, we have some new things that are going to be coming up in the next couple of months. And I'm, I'm super pumped to, uh, to uh, start doing and also announcing. So stay tuned for those. Peace, love, respect. Keep your blood clean.